name's Darren and welcome to my workshop. Got a few different Ryobi items that I've had for a while but haven't done reviews on because individually probably not worth reviewing and not necessarily in keeping with what this channel is all about. But Christmas is here once again, time to have some fun and some of you will probably get gift cards as gifts and wonder what to spend them on. So uh, if you get a gift card to a big box hardware store, maybe some of these items would be good. So the first cab off the rank here is the R18R Bluetooth AM FM radio. Handy little device. Um, now I can't just go ahead and play the radio for you because that would be a breach of copyright, no doubt. Uh, so I'll put some music on in a moment that I own, but before we get to that, I'll just quickly run you through it. So you can see on the top of the unit, there's a clock, and that has a couple of AA batteries backing it up. So as when you remove your big battery for charging, you don't lose your time. You can see there's a little flap here, a little screw, you undo that. And sure enough, inside a couple of AA batteries. Put it on a 2.5 amp hour battery, and this thing will give you music for all day, no problems. Uh, I've only got the 5 amp hour battery on there now just because that's what's convenient. Uh, so, what does it do? Well, it's AM, FM. It's got an auxiliary input just here on the side, just above my thumb there. Uh, uses a 3.5mm audio jack, which won't go into your phone anymore these days, of course, because everything's Bluetooth, but that's okay. This is Bluetooth. And it has a USB port right here so you can charge your phone or other device anyway something handy if you're going camping you want to take some music with you or you're on the job site and you just want to charge your phone around the back is a little elastic band you can rest your phone on these little ledges and hold it in place with the band uh, there's the ledges there if you didn't see them in the last shot and yeah so that holds anything up to a an iphone max i think Certainly my iPhone 11 Pro fits on there with room to spare. Handy. There's a little handle here for carrying it, which I actually do use a lot. The antenna folds down and folds back up. It says it has two 7 watt speakers, but for the life of me, I can only see one speaker in there. I think maybe that's a misprint on their website, the, the two speaker thing. It's got 20 radio presets. What it doesn't have is DAB, Digital Audio Broadcasting Reception. It only does analog radio, which can be a bit of a pain in the bum if you're working in a big concrete building. Those of you that try to use a radio in somewhere like the basement of a skyscraper will know you've got no hope of getting a, a decent signal in there. But then that's okay because, like I say, it's got Bluetooth. So let's flick it on to Bluetooth and let's get some music pumping through it so you get an idea of what it can do. And I'm gonna charge my iPad off it at the same time as I'm playing music with it. Because basically my iPad's about to go flat. <laughs> Down to 2%. All right. I don't know if this microphone's going to do that any justice, to be honest, or if you're just going to hear a distorted mess. But it goes loud and it's very clear. So I'm in the corner of the workshop now. Um, over to me, it sounds nice and clear. So that's the R18R. Uh, pros and cons, quite simply, uh, it's pros are it's good, portable, decent sound, although it's only got, it's not stereo, it's mono, but otherwise decent sound, certainly fills the room you're working in, but the cons, doesn't have digital audio, doesn't have digital radio, fancy that, in this day and age. Alright, moving on. Now here's one that's well worth a look at. Back in the day I used to be a technician in the Air Force and we used to use soldering stations a lot. And I do mean a lot. Because they are by far superior to the plug-in-the-wall variety of soldering iron that just, you know, just has a plug on the end of the cord. 
there you can set the temperature to the right temperature for the solder you're using and if you've got something that's fairly delicate you can dial it back a bit and just spend a little bit longer soldering rather than have it too hot and maybe damage the component. You can change the tips on a soldering station so at the moment I've got a cutting hot knife in there but you can take that off now we've got two soldering tips we can use we've got a large one for doing jobs like uh, joining wires for example and a nice pointy one for doing things like circuit board work and we've also got a little tip here for doing pyrography you can see it's pointy and uh, yeah you just burn a pattern in some wood with that what I'm going to show you though is actually what I use it for the most is the hot knife and I'll show you how quick it actually gets hot this thing gets hotter than some of the mains powered soldering stations I've used in the past If you've used one of the Royale soldering stations, perhaps in the Defence Force, like I did, then you'll, you know, you'll have some idea of what a decent soldering station should perform like, and you'll be amazed at how quick this gets up to temp off a battery. So we're going to cut some rope with it. I'm going to heat it up. The light LED is red. I'm going to chuck a block of wood under the back of this just to tilt it up and make sure you can see the LED clearly. So there it is. So we're just waiting for that to go green and we will be good to go. This is real time. I'm not pausing this or fast forwarding in any way. And that's why I'm just, just wasting time just talking. There we go, green already. So you can see that was all real time. So I'll just pop that down now and I'll use this piece of wood as a little cutting block and I'll just show you what you can do with a hot knife. Very handy. There you go. Now that piece of rope there won't fray. <laughs> Bad example because I've left a little extra piece sticking off it. But that won't fray now. That's all nice and melted together. But it's a nice neat cut as well. It's not squashed or anything. Very handy for cutting uh, things like that. Of course you're not limited to that. You can cut anything you want to do a hot cut with. You could cut wax with it if you wanted. Okay, so the unit itself has variable temperature control here, you can see. Oh, that's a bit too hot, I better turn that down, let that cool down now. We've got a tool rest on the side, so you've got somewhere to put your hot soldering iron when you want your hands for something else. Storage for your bits across the top. A little well for a sponge for wiping your tip, especially useful if you actually are soldering. Around the back is where your soldering iron, sorry, around the back is where your battery plugs in. It's not hybrid, but if you have a look at this, maybe they were thinking of going to make it a hybrid unit, because that looks to me like that was going to take a mains plug, and they changed their mind. Wouldn't that be great if it was a hybrid unit? Also, on here, uh, to some of you this might make much sense, but those of you who do a lot of soldering will appreciate this, we've got an earthing little hook. So you can clip this with your anti-static strap, for example, and hook this to the same, if you've got an anti-static mat, you could hook this to your anti-static mat and everything would be at the same potential. Great way of stopping you zapping things. All right, so that's the soldering iron. Much better than expected and amazingly good for something that is powered off a battery. This is the R18 PI, power inflator. So what it is basically is a little pump for pumping up tyres, bike tyres, car tyres, footballs, uh, toys of various different sorts. And you can see it's got some attachment for balls and toys in the front. You can just slide them out like so. Stick them in the end and clamp them in place and there you go. That one for example you could use for inflating some sort of flotation toy or something. Perhaps a rubber duck. <laughs> Other way around, dude. And then they just clip back in when you finish them. And it's great having them right there. Now, according to the internet, it says it will do up to 150 PSI. 
I think it might struggle at that kind of pressure to be honest but certainly up around the 60 psi that you would need for a car tire it'll do the job it is a small unit though and it's got one single piston in it it's not designed for prolonged use if you want to do all four of your tires on your car I recommend you have a little bit of a break between each tire and just let the unit cool a little bit if you keep using it full on for a long period of time I think you'll shorten the life of it I think it is designed for occasional use so things I use it for for example pumping up bike tires I'd use that mostly for that but I take it with me when I go camping as well so if I need to pump up my tires in an emergency I can and it's been great it's never let me down so yeah I think if I was to do a pros and cons uh, the pros are that it's small portable handy easy to have around whenever you need it runs off the battery you already have cons though it's very loud it really is loud let me give you a little example of just how loud this is and like I said if you use it too much it will overheat but really for what it's designed for it'll do the job next on the list is the Ryobi R18 ALU lamp it's got a little hook on the top for hanging it up if you want to hang it again it's got a little charger on the side so handy if you want to take it camping or charge your phone off it or whatever it's got two brightness levels now the LED is up the top but there's a reflector down the bottom that reflects it so well it makes it look like there's another LED down the bottom so that's maximum brightness that's the low brightness level and of course back off handy little unit pros and cons um, look, I can't think of any cons it does exactly what it's meant to do it, it, it's a lantern and it works and it charges things alright so I've mentioned camping a few times so how do you charge these batteries while you're camping well here we are the 12 volt charger so this one's got a different name to all the others this is the BCL 1418IV and it's a 12 volt charger for an 18 volt battery so obviously it steps up the voltage you plug that in your cigarette lighter in your car plug your battery into here and away you go it charges it does a good job it's not as quick as a mains charger but it's quick enough and it'll certainly get you out of trouble okay so hopefully that's been of some use if you're into camping then there's definitely some items there that come in handy for you uh, if you've been thinking of buying a soldering station then maybe a portable soldering station's a handier thing than a 240 volt soldering station certainly is in my case because I take that to work I chuck it in my tool trolley and I can take it around to wherever I need it which is very handy and also it comes in handy with testing as well testing and tagging rather than have to have another tool that gets tested and tagged at work I just have my battery charger tested and tagged and all the other tools just use the same three batteries basically over and over so very handy indeed okay well enjoy the silly season have a really great day and I will catch you in the next video bye for now